Hi everybody, this is Watercolor Painting, October 8th. Today we are going to further study complementary colors. So I've found a project for us to do that involves using yellow and purple only. And uh, yellow will be the lemons and purple will be the shadows. I also have posted on Slack some photos of oranges done in this way using orange for the orange and blue for the shadows. There's also one with lemons done with yellow and blue, but I'd kind of like you to use purple in those instead if you like the position. So here's two examples of what I posted. This is one. This really shows well the use of purple for the shadow. Um, I kind of feel like there would be a darker shadow under here, but I wasn't present when this was painted, so maybe the light was coming from this direction. It was really brightening this up. Then the other possibility is this one. It doesn't have as much purple in the shadow, but I'm going to add more. So I'm still in my mind deciding if I'm going to do this piece as a demonstration for you or this one, but I'm kind of leaning towards this one so that you can see how to do the large whole lemon and then also how to do the cut lemon. Now remember in watercolor, to get the white, it's not like painting in acrylics or oils or more opaque paint where you add the highlight last. You have to be careful to leave that highlight white, the white of the paper. Now, some of you do have some white paint in your kit that might work, but remember, as a rule, watercolor is um, more transparent and it will seep through. So if you have color underneath and your plan is to put white on top, that white will re-wet what's underneath and possibly tint your white that color. So it's always wisest in watercolor to really think through your project and leave these areas that are white or very light colored, leave those that way when you're doing your work. So you, it's just something you have to think about. It's not really hard, it's just something you have to think about. So I have ready my paper. I have my two colors, which I have already placed some on my plate. So I'm gonna move those aside. I have two brushes. I think that's all I'll need. I do have my other brushes handy if I need them. Uh, I might end up needing something a little bigger to put in a wash at the bottom. This filbert here would, would do the trick. Um, and if I need more detail, I could use this one. So those are there. And then I'm gonna do a very, very, very light sketch with this mechanical pencil. And I had my eraser handy, there it is, in order to lighten those lines. So let's start with that. And I also have two, two cups of water. You can't see them, they're off camera. The reason I have two is because in this particular instance, if I want pure yellow, but I have tinted my water with the purple, my yellow will also get a tint of purple. That's how sensitive yellow is. So when I know I'm using something where I want a distinct light color. I might use two separate water containers so I don't have to get up and go get fresh water all the time. And then that way I can rinse my brush if it has purple in the purple container before then getting into the yellow. And that way it's going to protect my yellow. <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to do, let me move this plate out so I have a place to set these, is I'm just going to kind of get in this first lemon. It's just a nice round shape. Now, you guys know the transfer method where we put uh, graphite on the back. You could print these. I've posted them on Slack. You could print them and you could use the transfer method to get this image on your uh, watercolor paper. I am fine with that in this class because this class is called watercolor it, it, painting. It is not called drawing and watercolor painting. So if you have the drawing skills, by all means use them. It's better to use the skills you have and improve on those skills. But if you're still struggling with just being able to draw like I'm drawing here, remember I always tell you I've got a good 50 years under my belt of doing artwork. Um, so and I went to school for art. So don't look at this and say, oh, I'm a terrible artist because I can't draw it. There's also skill because you've developed the skill through practice. So um, just consider that. Now notice too, I drew that whole lemon even though I knew part of it was gonna be hidden. And I 
that's just how you do it so that your shapes are correct. You don't just stop here and hope that the line you pick up over here is in the correct spot. It's another reason you draw so incredibly light. Now, I also need my background. In this case, it's, it's a tablecloth. It's not straight across, which gives it a little more interest. Uh, this is your piece. You can do whatever you want. You could make it straight across if you wanted to have it as if it's sitting on a table. These kind of look like maybe they were sat down on maybe a napkin that was just tossed on the table. So I'm going to do it as this this sample shows just because um, that's what we have. Now they also have the shadow. I'm not really going to draw that in on this. Again, with colored pencil, with the purple, the purple would hide the pencil line. What's going to happen though is I'm going to erase out, and you may not be able to see this. This might be so light, which is is good that you can't really see these shapes. Notice I am not drawing in this middle bit. The reason I'm not is because the pencil lines will show when I go to put the water in and I don't want those pencil lines to show. So the sad thing that's going to happen is, is I have drawn this in, but then I have to get it so light that when the yellow is on there, so I'm barely able to see it myself. So I know you can't see it on the camera. Just know that that's what I'm doing. I drew it in and now I'm almost erasing it. Like I can just barely see where I have that line. Now this top bit is the bit that's the lightest. That's why I'm most concerned about that. The rest of this is gonna get, like this area needs to be kind of light. These down here, I can probably work with over here. There's definitely purple and then up in here too. It's going to have to be pretty light and some of it almost invisible where I just know where that line is. So I know that makes it more difficult, but it's also watercolor. It's a looser medium. It's okay if your lemon is a little fatter because you erased out the line and just had to remember where the line was. But there's also something about drawing it that gets it in your head, even though you erase it. I don't, I don't know, can't explain it, but that's the way it is. It's a, like a visual imprint, maybe. Okay, so now I'm gonna get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush in my yellow container. I also have my paper towels handy. Um, actually, I'm gonna pull one off just to keep it completely clean in case I need it for a rescue later. So I'm gonna start with some pure yellow. This project is gonna be easier if I start with the yellow. Now, if I don't like the absolute pure yellow, I could tint it a tiny bit with a tiny bit of purple and darken it, see? And that would give it just a, see how it's, it darkens it? That complementary color. So I could do that, I could like, tint my yellow so it's a deeper yellow than this bright yellow that I'm using. Um, so there's options and you can play around with the scrap paper to see what colors you like, but I'm not. I'm going to start with this yellow. You can look through your yellows if you've got more than one to choose from. So I'm gonna start by getting in this bit, which I know part of this is gonna get the purple over it but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let it be a little more concentrated down here. And then I'm gonna get this line in that I literally erased, right? And then there is a little outline and it's a little jaggedy. So I'm gonna let my hand wiggle. And then um, the center, I can outline it. So it's about here and I'm gonna kind of do this little outline thing to keep that center like that, see? And then I'm gonna come down or over across with my rind area. I'm gonna move this over so you can see more what I'm working from. The rind area kind of has to come inside that circle, right? So again, this is a natural object, so it's kind of preferred maybe that the lines aren't perfect. Now, I see that could have stayed white there. I could come in now and get that and wet it out and put this pale, pale yellow all through this. You can all 
also come along and darken this edge. I might use some of that darkened yellow that I had. Okay. Notice how that's running in there because it was still wet. Um, now I'm going to go ahead using a kind of a paled out yellow, a watery yellow. I'm going to kind of draw in these sections. And again, I'm just doing this kind of freehand, deciding, you know, where these lemon sections go. Using the picture as a guide, but you can see I'm not being exact. Nobody is going to look at this when I'm done and say, oh, that's not a lemon because you didn't match the original. No one's going to know the original I took it from or if I just had a lemon sitting in front of me cut. They're, they're, every You guys know, every lemon, every orange, the sections can be a little different. The only thing you want to do is you want to make sure that as you come around, your sections make sense. If I hadn't done that just right or been keeping an eye on the sizes, this could have been very skinny, which sometimes there are rather skinny lemon sections. Now all I've got to do is come back in with some lines. And this is nice because I'm going to dip in. And then as I draw these lines that represent the sections, oh my goodness, I just made a boo-boo. And we're gonna fix that really quick. See, got it. Whew. That was scary for just a split second. There's a little yellow, there's a spot. Okay, got it. All right, back to what we were doing. Actually, I'm glad I make mistakes on video because you guys gotta know what to do, right? Um, so yeah, as you're painting these in, the paint gets lighter. So that gives you more of a realistic um, look. So, but I, I do re-dip after each one to get some fresh paint so that they all have a little bit of fresh and then a little bit of the more tinted. So there we go. There's the top of our lemon. That's how easy that is. Now, this bit where the rind is needs to be just ever so tinted just ever so lightly, not just perfect white. So I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle in a little more yellow in this rind area. And now that I think I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm gonna grab a little more darker yellow. Oops, didn't get much, did I? And I'm gonna come down with the bottom part of this lemon and make it a little darker. And I'm also going to put some over here. And now I'm just going to dip some water and kind of pull that on up and get that yellow in. Now, if this was dry, completely dry right now, I would just go ahead and grab some purple and put it in there. I can do that down here if I want. But this, this rind that I just put in is still wet. And if I do that now, it's gonna run purple into all those areas. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna let this dry because I can always come back because I really want wet on wet when I do the purple into the yellow, but I also wanted a coating of yellow underneath. So this is a step process. So I'm gonna let this lemon dry. And now I'm gonna go over to this lemon. So this lemon too, I'm gonna to go ahead and put the yellow in. I do, like I said, I do eventually want it wet on wet, but for now, and this can kind of run up to this because it's okay if some of this yellow runs into that yellow, because it's not gonna hurt anything right now. Now later with the purple, it could. So this is gonna get darker down here in a little bit. So I'm gonna put, some bright yellow kind of up in this area to give that next layer of darkness. And I'm also gonna put some straight yellow kind of up through there. Okay, and then I'll get me some water. I'm gonna have to probably get some more yellow on my plate. I've about used it all up. So I'm very carefully coming in here this is going to get dark purple on it in a little bit, but I still want that yellow underneath because I don't want straight purple. 
I really want that yellow to kind of mix with it and tint it at least a little bit. The purple's going to pretty much overpower it. Okay. So this too, I'm just going to get this yellow in. I should have a hair dryer here so I could dry this and just keep going with the video. I think it'll dry quick enough though. We should be fine. Let me get that one more yellow. I need more yellow out. Where'd my yellow go? There it is. <clears throat> I had to quit and get a plate out because I've been working on doing these and look at my palette. It's got so much paint on it that I didn't have a clean place for just the yellow and the purple. So I just got out a plate to do this. I actually am going to put a little more yellow here. I decided I like this vibrant yellow. The example I'm going from is a little bit more soft, but I am kind of wanting a little more bright yellow on this. So I'm going to do another layer here. Look at that, how nice that looks with the um, light underneath, the light yellow. I like that. Really, I do like that. And look how, this is just really, you know how it comes in in the middle on a lemon. Okay, and then this one too, I want some more intensity of that yellow because it's going to look so pretty against that purple. So, again, all this I've done with the same brush because I've got a nice round that gets to a good point. So I'm going to just put a little water here to just kind of get it to blend and, and soften the edge. But I'm also going to pull some of that water off so I don't have to wait so long for it to dry. Because this is going to get darker. It's okay. All right. All right. I'm actually going to dab into this a little just to get some of the extra water off in this area. Because this is, like I said, this has got to get good and dry for me to be able to put that purple in there or they're going to run. See how this yellow is running into here? It's fine with it being yellow, it running like that because that darker purple is going to go on top. But I really can't put any of the, the purples in in this lemon area with the um, yellow let, wet or I'm just going to have these weird runs in. I need to control the running. So these lemons need to be dry before I go to that next step. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna fan it a tiny bit. Such an exciting video, you get to watch paint dry. Um, and then, oh, I got a hair, that's not good. All right, now I'm gonna take that larger brush we talked about, and I'm gonna take my purple, and now I'm dipping in my other water container and I'm coming way over here, and I'm making a purple wash, a very light purple wash. So I'm separating, see how I'm separating it from the rest of the purple? Because this is a pretty intense purple. So I wanna separate it out, and I want it light, very light. Now I could test it on the very corner, because this has got some other stains, and if I really like this, I really do like lemons, I could cut this down to like a five by seven and frame it and hang it in my kitchen. That would be pretty, right? Or just give it to somebody as a gift that I know likes lemons. So this edge won't be used, and that purple is super light, and that's what I'm after, but I need a lot of it. I don't think I have enough. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of water. Notice how I'm tipping my plate. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more purple. I've got this puddle matching up with that, so I flatten this paint out. I'm gonna have water running all the way into my yellow. So now I'm stuck, but not really, because I'm gonna use most of this, and whatever I don't use right away, I can always take my paper towel and dry it up so I can set my paint down. So it's, this isn't really as hard as it looks. So I'm gonna start over here, and I'm just gonna start underlaying in this purple cloth. And it, it, the direction of that cloth is kind of moving outward like this. So I am just going to put this here so it doesn't move while I'm trying to do this for you. Um, I'm just going to, no, I'm not going to get too close to that yellow because dark purple is going to go in there. So the underwash doesn't have to touch that yellow right now, okay? Just close enough that it's there but not so close that it actually runs into the yellow at this point. And I need a little more purple. It's getting so pale. Now up here, it actually is not gonna get a lot darker. So I could like go ahead and, this is coming down. I need more, I thought I made plenty. I need to add a little more 
purple to it. So it's kind of the same tone, right? And it's okay if there's some white streaks in it. So this isn't a terribly difficult piece. Um, I think you guys should be able to get this done and you can post your pictures on Slack and I can look at them and see how you did. You could private message them to me in Slack if you don't want the rest of the class to see. But I really wanna encourage you to, to do allow everybody to see each other's work because we wanna create an area where you can work and be confident that others are gonna encourage you in your work and not ridicule you or make fun of you. And that is our atmosphere in my classes. So I encourage you to, um, to be willing to share your work and be okay that you're learning and it doesn't have to, everybody's doesn't have to be at the same level. So there's our kind of our basic um, background. Now there's a couple of spots. Oh, actually, my plate is still a little wet, so I'm gonna just set it tipped on a pencil so that that puddle of purple stays down there. Um, what I need to do, since I'm still waiting now for this bit to dry before I go on, I'm gonna go ahead and put a few little darker runs to show these folds in this fabric. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just gonna pick a little more dark purple up. And this is still wet, which makes it easier. So I've got a little bit of dark purple. And I know that's darker than the picture shows, but I'm gonna show you why that's okay. Okay, so there's our kind of folds. All I gotta do is dip a little more water and come in and add some water. And what that does is that gives me that, that line of darker paint and uh, it just bleeds it on out, see? Do the same thing over here, smooth out those bleeds. Let's smooth out these bleeds. And that's our little area of a fold. So it's pretty, pretty simple to do. Just basically adding a bit of a shadow in there. I'm going to add a tiny more over on this side. So it is just a little darker on this side. See? And I'm going to run it down that again to sharpen that edge. It keeps wanting to bleed. So I'm just going to run my, my paintbrush down there. And then run it down there. So that should do on that. I'm going to fan it again in here. I think we're done for now with him, but we're going to be adding in some more of this purple. Now, these shadows are definitely yellow with purple added. See how they're more almost like a brown? And then here it's more of a true purple. So those are two different things we will do. So I'm actually, I think this area is probably... Hmm. Actually, I think we're going to put our shadows on our lemons first. This is definitely dry enough to do that. So now I'm going to switch back to this brush, the, the round. It's a number eight round. Yours doesn't have to be the exact one as that. And you can see there's some shadow down here, and there's some shadow over here. And then there's our deeper shadow here. And like I said, this is a yellow with purple in it. It looks like just purple, but it is a yellow with purple. So what I'm going to do is that's what I had over here. If you remember, I had mixed some yellow with the purple. So I'm gonna pull this over and I'm gonna let this kind of come into it. There we go. And I think I'm gonna steal a bit of this because actually I probably don't need the pure purple anymore. So there we go. We have our like purplish brown going. I like that there's a little clear purple streaking through it. So I'm gonna start with the darker ones just because, well, maybe I'm not, this is lighter than I thought. So I am gonna just come over here and just layer in a shadow where there was a shadow on this side of that lemon. Now, I don't want it to go past this rind here, the cut open part, because that I still want to stay white. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of lay this in and then I'm actually going to do just a little bit of a, kind of like an outline of the edge of that purple, of that, uh, not purple, the rind. See, now that gives me that edge 
of that where that rind is. It also comes on up around here. And now this looks like it's a little more purplish. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the actual purple through here. And it is more shadowed right up to where I've got that line. But since it's dry on the other side, it's not gonna go over that edge, remember? If we do wet on dry, it, it stays within its, if you're not overly zealous with your water amount, it will stay kind of where you've put it. So we're gonna run that through there, run this one down, and that's probably enough. So what I did is I cleaned my brush now. I'm gonna grab a little bit of pure yellow, and I'm gonna meet that purple with some wet yellow to soften that edge. See how that softens up? Isn't that pretty? And I'm gonna do that down here as well. I'm gonna have to get, squirt some more purple yellow out. And I'm gonna get that more of that yellow in there and just meet that edge. And look how those two come together. Isn't that beautiful? So simple, really. It's just knowing the steps and taking your time. Um, you know, there's a little bit of that purplish shadows in some of this. So let's add some of that in as well. Give it a little more depth. Just a few little lines here and there. It's not that hard. Just be loose with it and kind of think where they might be. And uh, that's all there is to that. That looks nice. I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna need some more yellow here. Okay, so there's more yellow. I've got plenty of purple and I've got plenty of muddy yellow. See? <laughs> now, this little bit needs its shadow, but this is kind of wet, right? So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna add a bit of straight purple and I'm gonna do kind of like we did over there. I'm just gonna come right up to the edge with this deep, deep, dark color and run it around as far as I think that shadow goes. And I can see my pencil line, that's kind of my guide. I don't want that pencil line to show, so I'm putting this purple right up to it. Alrighty, now, coming around with that. Coming around with this. I'm kind of liking a little more intense purple than just the muddy, so I did grab a little straight purple on that bit. Um, again, I don't want this dark shadow to run into that one. I just don't want that to happen. So I am going to have to let this get dry a little before I throw in this dark shadow that's between those lemons. So what I'm gonna do, rinse it off my purple in my purple cup, test it on my paper towel to make sure it's clear. I'm gonna get a little pure yellow again with some yellow water. So I've got me some yellowish water here. I'm gonna do like we did over there. I'm just gonna meet that semi-wet purple edge with some wet yellow and let those two kind of flow together and make it a softness, okay? So that's gonna work for that. Now, draft my brush. I have to set my paint tipped still because I've got that nasty color down there and I don't want it to infect my yellow up on the other end. I'm gonna dry this again. This shouldn't take long. Sorry, I don't have any music for you. La, la, la. La, 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 paint dry music. Music to watch paint dry by. I don't know about that. Definitely need a hair dryer next time, huh? Because I can't really do the shadow underneath either till these dry it's just gonna run together and I don't want that to run together. So, and I really want to do this whole shadow at one time. So I have to wait. It's okay. Alrighty, is that dry? I think that's dry enough now. I can go ahead and put this, this dark shadow is what we're gonna do now. Same concept we were just doing a little bit ago. Um, barely wet brush. I'm gonna dip into this weird color and then get some actual purple for my purple puddle. And I am gonna 
come in close to that other lemon. Right up next to it. If your hand isn't steady, rest it on your paper. Just gotta make sure that's dry where you're resting it. There we go. Mm, got a little further down. So that just means our lemon either is a little bigger or that will be picked up by the, ooh, look at that, isn't that one pretty? There we go. Now, this shadow here has an arc to it because it's the shadow cast by the light coming this way and this lemon is curved. So this shadow is actually the curve of that lemon. Not like anybody's gonna come in here with an engineering uh, eye and measure that that shadow is perfect, but it's just generally, that's what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little of that muddiness. This is a fairly dark shadow. So this is where we can go with darker purple. Maybe not quite that dark though, huh? I'm gonna pull some of that off. Remember, we dry the brush and then you can pull color off. And I'm gonna move it down and over. It should be like dark right up against this other lemon. So I'm just gonna like move those pigments. Remember that's what this is, is you're controlling where the pigments are gonna float. Went right up against that other lemon. And I could maybe tip my paper, that would help. And then, now see that that was wet. But that all is supposed to kind of have the same color. It's supposed to kind of come together over there. I'm going to come up, and it is softened. It's not a sharp, sharp line. So I'm going to introduce some of this yellow and introduce it down through here and let this darker color kind of pull over into that other one. Now you'll notice I've got a little more bright purple going than this. But that's okay. It's my picture. I can do what I want with it, right? I also wish this was a little purpler. Purpler? I think it's more purple. Don't tell the English department that I can't speak correctly. <laughs> I think they already know. <laughs> so, alrighty. Since I put that in, I gotta soften that edge and I gotta be careful not to let this water get into that water or I'm gonna end up with purple running into it, it's like a whole mess. So yeah, you gotta watch it. You can always come back in and touch up some of that too when it's totally dry. I'm kind of happy with that, but it kind of feels like this edge maybe should be a little softer. So I'm gonna add some more yellow and kind of try to soften this edge a bit so it looks more like a shadow than somebody dipped the edge of the lemon in purple paint, you know? And then I can pull the darkest bits down to the bottom where it should be the darkest. That I think I'm a little bit more happy with. I think that will work. Now you can probably tell something that's happening is my paper's getting a little bit of a warp to it. And the paint's going that way when I really want it this way. There we go. There we go. Now do there we go I'm liking this better now just doing that bit getting all these dark pigments down to the bottom is gonna help with the shape of this now if again if I'm either impatient or I think it's fine I could come in and take some of this water out remember you're gonna remove pigment too but that's okay if if you feel you've got it dark enough, and it is pretty dark, so I think I'm okay. Look at all the pigment that's coming off. I think I'm okay doing that. So, alrighty. I think that's kind of working. And the yellow is, now my brush is rinsed. So I can kind of, whoop, purple still wants to run up in there. And lighten this up. It just seems too intense. Of a purple. I mean, I like it, but it, it just feels still a little, a little too intense. So let that go over there. And then now this has got to dry. But this is dry. So I could 
maybe pull some of my purple shadow over. But I really want to do that and let it run all together. So we're going to let this dry a little more. Still holding it so that the pigment goes where I want it to go. And then I will probably remove a tiny bit more water than this. Now, you'll be doing this on your own without thinking about a video going. So you see how I messed that up because I had the dirty paper towel. So you won't need, you could just prop this up on something, a book, just to prop it, walk away, let it dry, come back in a half hour, and then do your next step. But I want to show you all the steps. That's why I'm going to these lengths to get this to dry the way I want it. So I also don't like this line, maybe. I don't know. I guess it does need to have a little bit of a line to show that shadow. That's all right. Okay. I think we're pretty close. Looks like it's going to go okay. I'm going to another clean edge here. Pull off a little more water so this can get dry. And I know the edge of this lemon is kind of rough, but I'm going to another clean edge because I don't want to put that darker purple paper towel over in this area. I think we're probably pretty close to being able to put in that shadow. I'm also going to fix this little bit. Alrighty, now, okay, alrighty, now I'm going to get back into my purple, whoops, now I've got all this mess going on, right, so what I think I'm going to do, I'm pretty much done with the, the kind of the muddy, well, I might not be done with that muddy purple, maybe I don't want this quite intense, intense, so Maybe we'll start with that, move it on over, add some more purple to it so it's got a little more vibrancy. And then we're gonna start running this. Ooh, I like that. That's a pretty color. Well, purple and yellow. So we talked about how complementary colors mix to make a deeper color. So this is just a shadow that's coming through under this lemon and it's coming across and kind of mirroring the shape of these limits, see? So I want enough water in there that it comes over, but not so much that it starts running up into those other areas. So let me get it around this guy. And if it's not darker than the lemon above it, then I need to make it darker. So that comes with a more concentrated color, less water, right? So I'm adding more color, but not adding more water on my palette. And if I want a little more of the yellow effect in it, I can pull that down from up here. There we go, I like that. I'm gonna add that in here. See, I can just kind of tap it in to get that where it needs to be. And then now I can come up in here because that area should be darker. Because that's the darkest part is under up underneath where those two lemons meet is like the darkest part of this page. There we go. Get some more color on there. Now this could backfire and run on me. You're gonna wait till yours is completely dry. Okay. You're not gonna do what I'm doing here. <laughs> Don't you love how I tell you what not to do <laughs> instead of just showing you the best way? And then this kind of comes over and shows a bit of a shadow. Get up again to my pencil line. So I'm not uh, showing my pencil line anymore. If you did have a pencil line that overshot your ultimate painting in the end, you could erase that after it's completely dry. Don't try to erase when it's damp. You'll just have a mess on your hands. 
it literally would like tear up your paper. So I'm gonna come in from this color side to make give that shadow a line. I don't want it to blend smoothly with these other areas. I want it to have like a line to it to show where that shadow um, ends. And I still wish it was a little darker up underneath that lemon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purple, some yellow. Ooh, look at that nice dark, dark purplish brown I got there. Okay, and it's pretty intense. And I'm just gonna tap some of that into that area that I wish was a, just a little, see that I got it up on that lemon, so I just like changed the shape of the lemon real quick. Gonna just go with the flow, literally the flow of the water. Alrighty, feels like it needs to be darker. You see what I'm doing? I'm just making some more of that purple brown. Oh yeah, look at that. I like that. You guys like that? Now yours can be different. Yours can be more purpley. You can, you know, see what you think. I'm gonna run that water that way. Oh yeah, there it goes. And that's gonna chase that pigment up into this crevice area that I want to be darker, right? So that pigment's floating in the water and I want it to be right up in that little, that little area to be darker. This could probably be a little darker too, but if I darken it now, I could put a little in there. But if I darken it and run into this, then it's just going to all run together and that's going to look odd. It needs to be two separate sections. So, um, let's see what we got here. See that bit? Wanted to run, so now if I go the other way with it. Oh, I'm kind of liking that. That looks pretty neat. Um, the only thing I'm not super thrilled with is this edge. There shouldn't be a white line there, so I'm gonna pull that up just a little more. And then it feels like maybe this could go down a little bit. Maybe it needs a little more of a shadow coming down that way. And going on across. There we go, I think, I think we're done. I think that's it. Our nice little lemons. And uh, if you need to watch this video two, three times, do it. It's not, there's not a, a time stamp on how many times you watch it. Um, the more you watch it and get the handle of, of how we're doing it. I just wanted to put a little edge on this. Felt like it needed to come around a little more, a little more definition. Um, I think that's looking pretty good. So do whatever you think your thing needs. The only other thing I'm seeing is this dried enough I can add that in and probably when mine is completely dry I might add a little pale purple right up in here where that white is it doesn't make sense that there's that pure white but if again if I add it now it could cause a problem might not though because this is starting to dry now finally so if I just kind of squeak a little more purple a little layer of purple run it about the way I did before to show those where those folds were I can probably fade it in. There we go, fade it in. And then you can see a pencil line here. So that wouldn't hurt to maybe pretend that there's a an edge to that, whatever piece of fabric this is. I'll just put an edge along there and then get it wet and let it blend in with the other. And now you can't see my pencil line. So that wasn't part of the original painting either, but it's my painting. It doesn't matter if it's identical, see? It's pretty close. So you could also, I still have the white of the paper. It might have been pretty to put like a pale purplish yellow on the background. Uh, maybe not. You know, look again, it's your your picture to do that. Now this is dried a bit. So if I want to put a little bit across there. I don't want to play too much because that really uh, messes up the, the nice spontaneity of watercolor. So, so there it is. That's our project for this week. You can do this one or you could do one of the other ones I've put on Slack. Um, contact me on Slack with any questions and it doesn't have to look perfect your first time through. This is an experiment of learning more about how these paints work. Happy painting.